Hello, people that visit YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, where we investigate the several ways our brains create the environment we live in and probe the secrets of the human psyche. If you're new here, don't forget to press that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our deep dives into the most intriguing areas of the mind. Today we're delving into a subject that's both fascinating and a little unnerving. When God talks to narcissists, this is what happens. Now, one should not treat this lightly. It addresses the great junction of spirituality, psychology, and the convoluted character of human identification. So let us settle in and get ready to travel over this amazing terrain together. What then results when God speaks with narcissists? Let us first define narcissist exactly. These days, the word is used a lot and is sometimes used incorrectly to characterize somebody who is somewhat egocentric or self-centered. Clinically, however, narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, is a deep-seated, frequently destructive disorder in which a person has an exaggerated sense of their own importance, a great need for too much attention and praise, disturbed relationships, and little empathy for others. Imagine, for a moment, someone living in a universe created just of mirrors. Every reflection helps them to maintain their sense of self-importance, superiority, and conviction that the universe revolves around them. This is the emotional and psychological terrain a narcissist lives on. What then happens when someone so great, so beyond their grasp as God joins this self-constructed universe? When God speaks with a narcissist, the interaction is unique. In their universe, in which they are the main character in every narrative, God's voice can seem to them as only another mirror reflecting back. Many narcissists find that the idea of a higher power is more about affirmation and validation than it is about humility or submission. If they believe in God, it is frequently a God created in their own image, a figure that upholds their grandiose perspective of the world and themselves. Therefore, the response of a narcissist upon hearing what they consider to be the voice of God might be complicated and multifarious. They could read it as heavenly approval of their behavior, regardless of how self-serving or damaging such activities could be. They could find it evidence that they are unique, selected, or perhaps superhuman. After all, clearly if God is communicating to them, they are remarkable. But another layer exists to this. Sometimes a deeper psychological disintegration is sparked by the voice of God, or what they understand as His voice. You see, under layers of conceit and self-delusion, Narcissists typically hide their vulnerabilities and worries. One can find these weaknesses threatened by the idea of God. Their well-crafted identity could be destroyed by a real meeting with the divine with something far higher than themselves. Here things get quite intriguing. Should a narcissist get a word from God that questions their perspective, their response may be really harsh. They might completely discount the experience misinterpreted such as to maintain their sense of superiority. Alternatively, people might go through a serious crisis that calls for facing the aspects of themselves they had long buried. Consider a narcissist who has lived their life certain they are destined for greatness. They have exploited individuals as stepping stones, controlled others, and centered their existence on the quest of adulation and power. Imagine now that this individual has a spiritual experience whereby they hear a voice, probably in a dream, a period of intense introspection, or even in the middle of their regular existence. You are not the center of the universe, the voice says, imparting something straightforward yet significant. The love you offer defines your value rather than your ability to control others. For some, this could be a turning point in their lives and a means of reevaluation of their priorities. For a narcissist, though, this may constitute an existential threat. Their whole identity is based on their uniqueness, specialness, and destiny for greatness. 
Finding out their value is unrelated to these things could make one feel as though the ground is collapsing under their feet. The narcissist may then intensify their delusions and distort the message into one that suits their current story. God is guiding me toward even more amazing opportunities, they would claim. I simply have to keep pushing, keep striving, keep proving to the world how wonderful I am. Benevolent layers of self-deception bury the actual message. But supposing the narcissist cannot reinterpret the message? What if the experience is so strong, so indisputable that it cannot be merely twisted to fit their need? Here the psychological disintegration can start. Driven from their illusions, the narcissist may have to face the emptiness at their core. As people come to terms with the knowledge that they are not as unique as they had previously thought, they could suffer from extreme anxiety, sadness, or even a total breakdown. The paradox at core of the narcissist's connection with God is this. On one side, people yearn for the approval that results from thinking they are unique or chosen. Conversely, the actual meaning of most spiritual teachings, humility, compassion, selflessness, directly questions the basic ideas of the narcissist. The outcome is an ongoing tug-pull, a dance between rejecting the supernatural in favor of their own self-made reality. Naturally, no two narcissists are exactly the same. Some would honestly feel they had a unique relationship with God that distinguishes them from others. They could consider themselves leaders selected to fulfill God's will, messengers, or prophets. This can be especially risky since it makes individuals feel morally superior which helps them to defend their behavior regardless of how negative their activities could be for other people. Under extreme circumstances, this belief can cause grandiose illusions whereby the narcissist feels they are above both God's and man's rules. They could start to believe that they are perfect and that their behavior is always justifiable since they are fulfilling a divine will. Here the borders separating spirituality from mental illness might blur and result in perhaps harmful or destructive conduct. But consider the prospect of atonement as well. If a narcissist experiences a real spiritual encounter, can they really transform? There is no easy response here. Though everyone can change, the strongly rooted character of narcissism makes it especially challenging. Sometimes a narcissist experiences insight when they see the emptiness of their endeavors and the damage they have done. But maintaining that shift calls for a degree of humility and self-awareness that narcissists find difficult. Sometimes the experience causes a brief relaxation of their barriers, in which case they grow more receptive to the realization they are not the center of the universe. They might begin to value connections in serving others and in leading a life not just for their own needs and wants. These flashpoints of awareness, though, can be ephemeral and readily eclipsed by the narcissist's urge to guard their brittle ego. In essence, the connection between a narcissist and the idea of God is a complicated and sometimes conflicting one. On one side, the narcissist might look to God as a kind of affirmation, therefore supporting their sense of uniqueness and significance. Conversely, the actual lessons of most spiritual traditions, humility, compassion, and selflessness, directly challenge the narcissist's well-crafted identity. What then results from God speaking with a narcissist? Like so many things in life, the solution is unique to the person. Some would use the message as more evidence that they are meant for greatness and alter it to fit their circumstances. Others may go through a deep crisis that pushes them to face the emptiness at their core. Still others could discover a road to atonement in which they start to reject their illusions and welcome a life of humility and compassion. One thing is clear though, the interaction is never easy or uncomplicated. The struggle between the divine and the delusions defining a narcissist's existence is between the ultimate power and a brutal ego. And in that struggle, 
The result is always unknown and depending on the decisions taken thereafter. We really appreciate you viewing and following us through this thorough psychological exploration of the narcissist. Should you find this video enjoyable, kindly thumbs up it and forward it to your friends. Remember also to sign up for the channel to delve further into the psyche and the riddles that define us. Till next time, be careful and keep challenging the surroundings. Marcus Aurelius was one of the last great emperors of Rome who genuinely cared for the well-being of his citizens. He lived in a time where death was prevalent and chaos was everywhere. He wrote a manual for himself, which we now know as the Meditations. Despite being written around 2,000 years ago, his insights still carry strong weight today. Here are some principles from his Stoic philosophy that you can apply to your own life to make it more meaningful. 1. Ignore what others are doing. Marcus Aurelius said, Do not waste what remains of your life in speculating about your neighbors. Anything that distracts you from fidelity to the ruler within you means a loss of opportunity for some other task. Our time is very limited, so why waste it worrying about others? Focus on your own tasks and what is meaningful to you. Today, with social media, we are addicted to what others are doing. Take a break from social media for a week to devote all your time, energy, and effort to your own needs. This will help you stay focused and less envious. 2. Your reality is made by your opinions. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that life is but what you deem it. Life is opinion. This means there is no objective reality. We shape our own reality with our thoughts. For example, if someone talks about you negatively, instead of feeling frustrated, interpret it positively. Practice seeing every action and event in a positive light for a week to strengthen your perception. 3. Do less. Marcus Aurelius reminds us of the importance of doing less and cutting out superfluous actions. He said, If thou wouldst know contentment, let thy de needs be few. Focus on what is essential and cut out unnecessary actions and obligations. This will reduce stress and help you focus on what is truly important in life. 4. Remind yourself of death. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to live as if each day were our last. By keeping the awareness of death close, we focus on what truly matters. Ask yourself what you would do and what you wouldn't do if today were your last. This mindset helps prioritize meaningful activities and relationships. 5. You're stronger than you think. Marcus Aurelius said, How lucky I am that it has left me with no bitterness, unshaken by the present, and undismayed by the future. Life is challenging, but you are tougher than you think. Imagine yourself as the strongest person in the world, and see challenges as opportunities to prove your strength. 6. You are rising for the work of humankind. Marcus Aurelius tells us that, a man's true delight is to do the things he was made for. Discover your gift and share it with others. Ask friends or family to help identify your strengths and use them to empower and support those around you. 7. Never complain. Marcus Aurelius advises, Is your cucumber bitter? Throw it away. Are there briars in your path? Turn aside. That is enough. Instead of complaining about life's challenges, Think of how you can best use your limited means to achieve your goals. 8. You can live happily anywhere. Marcus Aurelius says, Let it be clear to you that the pace of green fields can always be yours in this or any other spot. Happiness is not tied to a specific place. Appreciate where you are and make the most of it. 9. Help the common good. Marcus Aurelius says, Avoid all actions that are haphazard or purposeless and let every action aim solely at the common good. Focus on actions that benefit others and contribute to the greater good without seeking recognition. 10. Be grateful for your blessings. Marcus Aurelius advises, Do not indulge in dreams of having what you have not, but reckon up the chief of the blessings you do possess and then thankfully remember how you would crave for them if they were not yours.
Gratitude for what you already have can bring happiness and contentment. These stoic principles can help reduce suffering, stress, and anxiety while providing strength and purpose. Embrace these lessons to lead a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Remember to subscribe for more weekly insights and advice.